Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Priscilla Niman, a 19 year old refugee from South Sudan living in Kakuma Refugee Camp in Kenya. I am a member of Kakuma Refugee It's a humbling privilege and honor for me to address you at this historic ICPD 25 Nairobi Summit. Thank you for the decision not to leave the last slide me behind. Priscilla, aged 19 years is among the select 11 personalities that made bold commitments at the closure of the Nairobi Summit on Population and Development held in the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. Her stood up to the world stage is full of ups and downs. At the age of 14 years, in 2014, after fighting intensified in her country, South Sudan. I had to come to Kakuma refugee camp with my stepmother. We were a family of about 12 of us my stepmother, my siblings, and some of my cousins. Since the situation was worsening, things weren't the same as they were back home because we were living in a family whereby we weren't lacking anything. She recalls that life started changing to the worst as soon as they left South Sudan. Dad could provide everything. But when the war began, we came to Kakuma refugee camp, things weren't the same. She started to witness the true colors of her stepmother, who wanted to marry her off to a rich man, fit to be her grandfather. So mom took the advantage of me, talked to the man without my knowledge. They agreed, paid the dowry, that I'll get married to that man. Then. A month before the man could come, she called me in the room and said, Priscilla, I had no other option. The kids are starving, we are in a refugee camp, no other support. The only thing that I could do is getting you married off by this man, though it's hold. I rejected his, her request because I was seeing that I had dreams to achieve. And to make the matter worse, by then, I was still in primary school. Priscilla, in her primary school by then, rejected the proposal, but her mother insisted. I told her that I'm very young for that man. I can't marry that man. He is 42 years old, and I'm only 14 years. We have big difference. Then she said, as long as you can be in a position of bearing a child, that's what matters. I told her, no. Me giving birth to a child, child doesn't matter. What matters is my brighter future of tomorrow. I don't have to marry that man. Then she said, no, it's a must. So I had no option. I had no choice. She agreed with the man. The man paid dowry. That day I went to school. I had a Congolese friend. Her name was Sarah. She went back to Congo right now. I shared the story, I narrated every, all the story to her. She felt pity of me. Then she then told me that let's go to my mom and share the story with her. We had to go to her mother. I shared the story to my friend's mother. The mother felt pity of me too. As a mother, she knew that it wasn't right for a young girl of 14 years to get married to a man of 42 years. Then I had to run away from home. I left the home for about a month because by then I was young. I never knew where to seek help from. I never knew that there were agencies where child marriage wasn't allowed. So the best option I had by then was running away from home to save myself from getting married to to that man. So I had to go to my friend's house. I stayed with them. The man waited for me. The mother looked for me. All my community members looked for me. I was nowhere to be seen. I ran to a Congolese friend because, you know, my, my community sometimes is very tricky. Like, even if I, if, for example, if he's my friend and we are from the same community. If he hides me now, of course he has another friend. He'll go, do you know what? Priscilla is there hiding with me. So what I thought, 
if I had gone to to a friend from my community, I could have been caught. So I decided to go to a Congolese friend because Congolese and South Sudanese are a bit far. So I stayed for a month. Then I had some bromas from my friends from school. And the whole full month, I had to stay at home, just indoors, because I don't have to go to school since I'll be seen in the school. And the day I ran, it was only six days remaining for me to be taken by, by the man. Because such marriages, no need for wedding, no need for celebration, of course, because it is a forced marriage. I wasn't agreeing. So when I heard that the man left, took had his dowry, all the things that he paid to my stepmother, I had to come back home. The day I came back home, I narrated the story to my stepmother that I was living with a friend of mine. But you know, stepmother sometimes are very funny. She couldn't understand that. She thought maybe I was with maybe a boyfriend or something like that. I tried to explain everything to her, but she she wasn't accepting. She thought she said that you have betrayed me. The world that I could have been having now of all gone everything went in vain i tried to, to consult her mom though you aren't my biological mother but you are like my mom because you took care of me since i was young yeah i know that i have a mother the one who bore me but since we stayed together and your own kids i call them my sisters and brothers why don't you please have pity on me why don't you see me as your daughter and please let me get done with my studies. Let me at least push up to form four if that's what you want. Let me at least go to high school because I'm only still in primary. She couldn't accept so. What she had to do was to separate me from in refugee camps. We have cards called ration cards. I don't know if you know them, but we have something called ration card for a family to be served by you. So she had to separate me from our cat, from their cat, telling me that you will go live with your own siblings. I had a sister who follows me, two of my, my the children to my elder sister. One is a boy, one, one my niece and my nephew. One is my aunt and my sister that follows me. Priscilla's story paints a miserable picture of what happens to girls in the refugee camps with the big question of how the United Nations humanitarian agencies fail to detect such cases. 33,000 per day in every community. When it comes to the humanitarian conflict and fragile setting, the problem is very, very big. At the moment, the reason we are campaigning aggressively to end this scourge is to avoid these possibilities, whether it is in a refugee camp or in a community setting. So where could the problem be? And repeatedly I say to you, uh, there is no much between the scale of the problem and our capability to actually deal with it. One critical example is the amount of resources that we deploy to tackle gender-based violence. Of the total humanitarian spending worldwide, less than one person goes to gender-based violence. And uh, UNFPA, together with other UN agencies and governments, we held a major conference this year in Oslo to bring awareness of the importance of mobilizing much needed greater resources to tackle gender-based violence, including child marriage, MFGM, and sexual violence. So this tells you there is no resource out there to really reach in every place to ensure that women are protected. Priscilla is now a youth leader and a member of Kakuma Youth Parliament in the Kenya's biggest refugee settlement of Kakuma. I'm just happy that I, I survived from get, getting married as, at my earlier age. And I also did a campaign earlier back in Kakuma refugee camp, of which it says no to child marriage. I'm always encouraging my fellow youth to stop child marriages, at least to educate our fellow parents, because they have the 
the mentality of if a girl is 12 years and above, she could be in a position of getting married. The only thing they consider is when she, she receives her means, that's over. She can just get married and give birth. And in Kakuma there, the elderly people are illiterate. It's also a very big challenge. Like when you are trying to explain something to somebody who, who is not educating, that is very hard. So we had to form Kakuma Youth Parliament at least to diverse, to interact with other communities because it's a camp where there is so many communities, Somalis, Ethiopians, South Sudanese, Rwanda, Congos, Congolese are also there. So that, that's why we formed Kakuma Youth Parliament at least if a Somali is having a problem and he or she doesn't want to disclose it to his or her fellow Somali, at least if she, she or he has a friend from South Sudanese, she can be in a position to go and disclose it to her. At least she can get some help. So UNFPA and some UN agencies are really in help, are really helping us in the process of empowering youth and trying to stop such things that are happening in refugee camp. Kakuma Youth Parliament was formed back in 2017. The main reason why we formed Kakuma Youth Parliament was to empower youth because youth were really suffering silently without being known. But we came up with Kakuma Youth Parliament to empower youth at least for youth voices to be heard. Kakuma Youth Parliament consists of a speaker, clerks, ministers and cabinet secretaries. I am a cabinet secretary and in fact when I go back there to my fellow members, we are youth leaders and if there is peace in the community, it begins with youth. Although Priscilla was fortunate to escape a child marriage, there are many other silent cases of child marriage in refugee settlements that go unnoticed. Talking about my story, I don't have to hide it because I know there are some girls outside who are going through what I went through. I just want to be an example to them. Say that if there is anyone who is having a story like mine, somebody who is being hurt, but she's quiet, she has to be open. I have been inspired by the decision, by the discussions and sought to uphold, promote and secure women's rights as human rights. I return to Kakuma with renewed hope that no girl shall share childhood with our child. No woman or no woman shall suffer at child birth. No violence against women and girls. I return to Kakuma assured that the, the promise shall fulfill the desires of girls to become leaders like Dr. Natalie Kamen. Many helpless refugee girls like her quietly being married in exchange for secure livelihood. My commitment as a young person is to go beyond zero. Thank you all, especially UNFPA and UNHCR for seeking the voice and leadership of young people as the promise to address the three zero is globally new. Your good work helped me survive child marriage. And thank you Kenya for being a country where refugees have voice and their choice is understood. Your example.